Okay, so I was at Fort Meade when 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 Saddam Hussein uh, invaded uh, Kuwait. Um, again, I was at Fort Meade was my duty station. However, every summer at Fort Meade, we would have to send a one of the MPs from Fort Meade would have to go supplement the the military police at Fort AP Hill, which is in Virginia. Um, that year, I happened to be volunteered to be that MP because nobody wanted to go there. It was a horrible detail to have to go to for a couple of months. So I was down at Fort AP Hill, Virginia, when the invasion of Kuwait occurred. Um, at that point, my unit back in, in Maryland um, immediately went on to active duty alert. I got called back. We we trained trained heavily for a couple of months, and then we we deployed. You know, we all. We flew out of uh, Andrews Air Force Base, I believe, on some big 747s. So I, th well, I don't know, remember the flight route, but ended up in Saudi Arabia, and we were there for, I don't know, about six months or so during during the Gulf War. So what was it like from your point of view? Oh, uh, it was very chaotic. Um, it, you know, I, I was only a, a, a I was a, a private first class, so I didn't have knowledge of a lot of the the information or what, what our jobs were going to be um, and you know the amount of troops that were were inserted into that country within a relatively short amount of time was just amazing you know and if you've never been to the Middle East it it's a very flat country there's just a lot of sand you know there's not a lot of landscape and topography and to watch the buildup of troops over you know from the time we first got there the first month or two it was just a massive troop buildup. It was, you know, they were bringing in tens of thousands of troops were coming in on a, a daily basis. Um, you know, the, and the, the equipment that they brought in was just, you know, all the aircrafts and the tanks and, you know, everything, uh, the ammunition. It was, uh, it was, it was a sight to see, to see all that. We tell, you know, units where to go. People people that get lost and they want to know how to get to here or there they're looking for units we had all the information we could uh, keep people on track we would just patrol up and down the main roadways making sure everybody's going where they're supposed to be going um, but but when, when when the when the ground war actually started you know things moved so fast that they weren't expecting um, you know troops weren't where they were supposed to be because things had moved so fast um, we ended up having to having to uh, deal with the the prisoners because there, there was a lot of prisoners of war that we had to take in and we were that wasn't part of our task game um, but again it had moved so fast that the, the other police units that were that were supposed to deal with the prisoners were way 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 behind us so we ended up having to have to deal with prisoners you know and moving them here and there and get them to where they had to go um, so th that was pretty much my extent of of combat activity it was we dealt with prisoners of war these were people just like you and me um, most of them did not want to be there um, they were forced into that situation um, um, obviously a lot of them that I spoke to they didn't speak English but the ones that did speak English I would have conversations with them you know and you know pr prior to the to the the conflict occurring it, they weren't in the military, but when when the, the Iraqi um, regime went around was trying to recruit soldiers for their conflict, you weren't given a choice. You, you were told that if you don't come and fight for us, we're going to kill your family, we're going to kill your wife, your kids, you know everything. So they didn't ha really have a choice. They, it was either you would you fight for us or we're going to kill your family, um, which is why a lot of them surrendered rather easily. You know, when they saw the, the United States forces coming, they just kind of threw up their hands, you know, because they didn't want to be there any more than we wanted to be there. So. These units that were advancing so quickly during the ground campaign, they were advancing so quickly and the enemy was just surrendering to them. Well, these guys really weren't set up to take prisoners. You know, they're more of, more of the, the infantry units that, that are the tip of the spear, so to speak. So they were getting the prisoners. They were and they were holding them, but they couldn't wait. All you know, they would put us in helicopters. We would fly up there. We would grab them, load them in the helicopters, bring them back to the unit where which was initially supposed to get them in the first place, but was so far behind because of the the distance. So we just transported them. We didn't 
um, actually house them. That was there, there's a there's a military occupation for correction officer just like they have for military police. So we, we got them back to the, the corrections department. Um, we did we dealt with a lot of the local um, the Saudi Arabian police departments, which was kind of interesting to talk to you know civilian police officers, civilian police in a, in a foreign country like that because they don't police the way that we police here in the United States. Obviously, they're able to use, um, uh, they can use corporal and capital punishment on people. You know, they can dish that out, you know, uh, be it, you know, chopping of hands, um, executions, um, you know, giving people lashes and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not, not like the United States law enforcement <laughs> at all. Um, it was different on a daily basis because our mission would change on a daily basis. Um, and, and Desert Storms, it just happened so fast that they didn't, they didn't plan for it to happen that fast. So I think, you know, it, it, you know, you, you had to, it was a very dynamic and fluid situation. Um, we were pretty much on like a 12 hour type shift. Um, it was either midnight to noon or noon to midnight. You know, we would go to one place for a week or two. Well, we would have to secure the perimeter. We would have like a gate area where we would set up um, just to provide security in and out of the compound. Again, we would also send out patrols to just drive around, make sure everybody's going where they're supposed to go. And, and, and although I didn't directly engage in, in combat, there was always a, a, you know, that sense of dread that you could die at any minute. You know, you never knew what the heck was gonna happen. Um, so you, you lived on edge the whole entire time you were there, you know, from, from even from the guys that were on the front line to the guys in the back. You, you lived in constant fear of death every minute of the time that you were there. It was uh, quite horrifying. I don't have a, I don't have a map of uh, where exactly we were at, at, at one time. Just because, again, I was only a private during that conflict, so I didn't really know where we were. Um, I did a lot of driving for my lieutenant. And basically, he would just tell me where to go, and that's the way I would go. So. Did you witness uh, a comment the distance, like bombing and artillery? We did, yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of the air stuff. You know, you would see a lot of the the aircrafts going, and you know, the the, the, the air airplanes flying around and, and whatnot. It was quite a sight to see. I remember when we were told that it was done, and we were so happy that it was done. Um, and we, we weren't there much longer after it ended. We didn't stay around too long. I can't I can't remember exactly when it was that we came back. I want to say it was in the, it was in the spring, well because we deployed there. It was in October, and we were back. You know, it was like a six month uh, thing. So it was probably like April or May we came back. Well, the war obviously when the war was done, you know our unit has to wait for for orders from the, from their superiors. Um, again, it didn't take long. It was, you know, once the whole entire unit was back together, you know, every every team had the, had a Humvee. When I say a team, you had a driver, the the supervisor, and then the, the guy on top, the gunner, you know, and everything was packed up and into the vehicles and stuff. They got loaded on the ships. We got into, we, we, we got on the airplanes and, and flew back. Went back to our unit here. We They gave us a couple days off, and then we... Started back up doing what we did at Fort Meade.